Imagine a car that requires no human input. It can drive itself and detect objects and other dangers that, you, that could affect how fast or slow you drive, or even affect your safety. It may sound crazy to some, but this might be the future of driving. Some cars have many automated elements using special computers and software, like Tesla's autopilot system. So how can cars drive themselves and detect objects in danger? In today's video, you'll learn more about how self-driving cars work as well as some of the benefits and drawbacks. Before we get started, please remember to subscribe to STEM Engineer and also to be sure to like and share this video. Now, let's dive into self-driving cars. So what are self-driving cars? According to Synopsis, self-driving cars can drive themselves in many situations, but someone must be there because they may need to take control of the car for any reason. This differs from autonomous or automated vehicles that are fully automated. Now that we know what self-driving cars are, how do they work? Self-driving cars use many different elements, including computers, software, and sensors. They also incorporate technology and math concepts like algorithms, radar, and even machine learning to interpret information gathered from sensors. The combination of all of these elements allow the car to see what's around it. For example, technology like machine learning can help a car understand and identify objects like pedestrians, trees, signs, and other things that a sensor might detect when a car is driving. Let's talk a little bit more about sensors, which are a key part of self-driving cars. There are many types of sensors that can be used, including cameras, LiDAR, radar, and GPS, or global positioning system. The camera in the car allows it to see physical objects like stoplights, signs, and pedestrians in real time, just like your eyes would. Then, systems within the car could interpret the data to instruct the car how to respond. Light detection and ranging, which we call LiDAR, is a measuring method that some sensors may use. LiDAR uses lasers to quickly measure the environment around it. LiDAR sends out thousands of laser pulses which bounce back when they touch surrounding objects. This allows the LiDAR sensor to detect the distance to the objects around it. LiDAR sensors allow the car to see things around it like buildings and tall objects like trees and even pedestrians. This information is used to then create a 3D image of the environment that is measured. Radar or radio detection and ranging is a sensor that uses electromagnetic energy to detect, track, and recognize objects that are a distance from the unit. Radar can even determine the velocity of objects at a distance. Sensors on a self-driving car can also use GPS, which is the global positioning system, to get an accurate sense of where the car is located on Earth by using satellites. GPS is also used for directions that a self-driving car may use to get to a specific location. If you want to learn more about GPS, check out my YouTube video on how does GPS work. Now that we've talked about sensors, what do self-driving cars do with this information? Computers in self-driving cars may use artificial intelligence to process the incoming data in real time using a technique called parallel processing. Parallel processing is essentially a computer being able to process multiple items of data at any given time. The computer can also share the data with other self-driving cars, making a network of cars that will make the driving safer because cars will keep a safe distance from each other with this communication. So now that we understand what self-driving cars and their key components are, let's talk about the benefits and the concerns of self-driving cars. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or the NHTSA, one of the major benefits of self-driving cars is that there is a potential to reduce the amount of car crashes. According to the NHTSA, over 96% of car crashes occur because of human error like driver distraction. Self-driving cars aren't affected by these human factors, and they have quicker reaction time. Also, they can communicate with other self-driving cars to avoid accidents. According to UC Berkeley, additional self-driving cars may decrease traffic jams on our roadways. We've talked about a few of the benefits of self-driving cars, but 
what are the drawbacks? Even though self-driving cars decrease accident rates, they are not 100% crash proof. There is still a chance that technology can malfunction, causing a crash. Also, if a self-driving car is involved in a crash, who would be at fault? Is it the manufacturer's fault or the owner's fault? Another potential drawback is that many professional jobs that involve drivers could be significantly reduced or eliminated, like taxi driving and trucking. So now you know all about self-driving cars. Thanks for joining me in this major adventure. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the red subscribe button and give my video a like if you enjoyed the content and share it with all of your friends. Thanks for joining and I'll see you in the next video.